AMD trounces Intel in the handheld department, the 9060 gets its detail shown off and AMD's finally doing it, doubling up the 3D V-Cache. Time for Super X 3D. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Tuesday, August 6, 2025. We're gonna start off today talking about details that are now coming out with the MSI Claw 8 that has the Z2 Extreme chip. The reason we're discussing this is because there has been a dearth of reviews, especially here with Western media, and it appears that these handhelds with the Z2 Extreme chips are popping up over in China and over in those, the Southeast Asian sectors of the world, making it difficult to have a really comprehensive view of what's going on. So we're kind of just dealing with people who are able to publish videos just kind of whenever they can, comparing certain chips to one another. And this is coming out from Golden Pig Upgrade over on Weibo, who's showing off that the Z2 Extreme is indeed better than the Lunar Lake setup that is on the MSI Claw 8, kind of trying to go one for one here showing that at 17 watts, the Claw A8 is outperforming what was going on with the Lunar Lake Claw. Essentially either tying or beating the Intel chip in nearly every game that they tested. And then also the same at 30 watts. There are a couple games where the Intel chip does pull ahead like in Cyberpunk or in Hitman or Shadow of the Tomb Raider. But for the most part, it does look like the Z2 Extreme has the advantage in terms of performance. But when it comes to power efficiency, they're roughly tied. Lunar Lake is exceptionally efficient and therefore it's delivering a lot of power and a lot of gaming prowess at the wattages that it is. And so it, it, they're roughly the same in terms of battery life, but you are getting better gaming experience out of the Z2 Extreme. And so depending on what the price point looks like, that could indicate which one you're gonna choose to go with. As far as I'm aware, we don't have a release date of any Z2 Extreme handheld here in the US. There is the report that the ROG Xbox Ally X is supposed to have that chip and it's allegedly gonna get released on August 20th, but that is not confirmed. It's supposed to have some sort of Gamescom announcement. Not quite clear what's going on there, but in case you're not interested in handhelds and you're just interested in regular gaming PCs, you should know that the PSU is the powerhouse of any PC and Silverstone is the powerhouse of PSUs. They're also sponsoring today's video. The Silverstone Triton series is a new line of gold efficiency rated ATX PSUs designed to meet the need for PC builders looking to get a solid power supply from a trusted name that's been selling power supplies longer than many of the popular brand names you may now know. The first models in this series are the Triton 650RX, 750RX, and 850RX. These units are fully compliant with ATX 3.1 specifications and include a 450 watt 12 volt dash two by six cable to support most new mid-range GPUs. Their Cybernetics Gold certified and feature a compact 140 millimeter depth complemented by a 120 millimeter ICB cooling fan so they fit easily in any case and will run quite for these three fixed cable PSUs, Silverstone also made sure they still look good by giving them black embossed cables that mimic the more premium sleeve setups. Grab something to power up your PC from Silverstone today. You can check out the new Triton line of PSUs via the links in the description below. Thanks to Silverstone for sponsoring. And you could probably pick up one of those Triton power supplies to run an RX 9060 because we are now getting details out about that GPU. I know that there was some kerfuffle around the nomenclature of the 9060 XT a lot of people wanted the 9060 XT 8 gig to be named the RX 9060. And that has led to confusion where people come into our Twitch stream while we're building a PC and say, hey, I have an RX 9060, when in reality, they do not. They have a 9060 XT, but they're also usually talking about the 16 gig. So it, I don't know that that would have helped too much, but the 9060 does look to be like an eight gig card. However, with just some features missing off of the 9060 XT, such as slower memory setup coming in at 18 gigabits per second GDDR6 versus the 20 that you find on the rest of the RX 9000 series lineup, giving it a slower memory bandwidth of only 288 gigabytes per second versus the 320 that's on the 9060 XT. Additionally, while it does look like it's gonna have the same core count as the 9060 XT coming with 2048, it's supposed to have a few hundred megahertz less in terms of clock speed. So slower RAM, slower GPU core, and just kind of a slower GPU overall 
likely it's expected to be, I couldn't expect them to sell it for more than 249. However, we've seen AMD do this before. 279 is entirely possible because they are just trying to compete against themselves for giving us bad pricing on GPUs. It's anticipated that Q3 is likely when this is gonna come out. So anytime between now and September is likely going to be the launch. Probably not gonna have a big to do about it because it's not necessarily that exceptional of a graphics card. We'll see if there's a review program. We'll see if there's a, a, a reasonable price point for this card. And let me know what you think of the RX 9060 down below while Reese lets you know about PC deals and park computer tech deals. That's what he does. Yo, welcome back to Yifty Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. And hey, I'll jump into the deals quickly for you guys. Starting off, we have this Europe mask rotating headphone stand for only $7.69, making it $5.30 off. But then next up, we have this ID cooling frozen A410 SE ARGB CPU air cooler going for only $14.99, making it $15 off. And then lastly, we have this MSI Spatium M560 PCIe 5.0 NVMe M.2 SSD with the one terabyte drive going for $69.99, making it $40 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, it looks like we're gonna get a really great deal when it comes to X3D chips. Super 3D V cache is incoming, according to one well-known leaker when it comes to new CPUs that AMD is likely to put out, including a new regular Ryzen 7 X3D chip. It looks like this might be something like a 9700 X3D, having roughly the same specs as the 9800 X3D. But the big one that everybody's talking about is the 16 core, 32 thread, 200 watt, 192 megabytes of L3 cache chip that we don't have a name for, and it's not quite clear what AMD would call it, the 9999X3D potentially, but this could potentially mean that they're finally doing 3D V cache on both sets of eight cores and making it so that you don't have to do anything with core parking or have any configuration within Windows. Instead, you're just gonna have 3D V cache on every single core. Now, previously, AMD has said that they were not going to do this because there's just not the market for it, but it appears that they are possibly changing their minds and that 192 megabytes of L3 caches essentially double what you get on a 9800X3D, which is 96 megabytes. So you just get a doubled 9800X3D in a bigger package, making it so that you have all of the goodness that you could possibly want with no compromises for anybody who wants that for either a productivity slash gaming setup. This could make it so that this is the de facto CPU for super high-end enthusiasts. And I'm curious what you think about it because I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm likely gonna pick one of these up for a PC build and, uh, probably do a giveaway with it. The PC we're gonna build on Friday is gonna, it's gonna be a weird one where we're gonna start off with not so good and then I'm gonna put in a 9950X3D or maybe I'm gonna put in uh, whatever this thing ends up happening to be. And what you guys happened to be in the comments yesterday is several things. So let's go ahead and see what you had to say. Daniel saying, oh, that desk PC, Brett, could you do a hardline liquid cool on it? I've never seen you do one. Uh, we don't do them terribly often, but it has happened. My last, but like personal project for hardline liquid cooling was five years ago for my project Mercury build with the X570 Aqua. I think it was a 30, 700X and a 5700XT. I really like this. This is in the Yule Beast Atlas case. Um, it was it was a fun project. We ended up giving it away as part of the charity stream that year, but we also recently did one with Corsair's IQ hardline setup. Didn't really like that. Also gave this away as a charity stream. This was actually Kyler's doing. He got to do his first hardline build with this. I think it came out pretty decent, especially custom wise. And then we have uh, a couple other hardline ones that have been on this channel, such as uh, the Rage display PC for MSI that ended up getting stolen for me all the way back in 2017. This was, uh, you know, a fun project. We're not gonna do hard line on the uh, desk PC simply because uh, number one, maintenance is a bear. It just sucks. And we need this to be something that we could easily swap out parts because it's for streaming and we need to make sure that it's like, it's easily plug and playable. So likely we are planning the idea is to do custom liquid cooling, but soft tubing, just to make it so that it's more flexible and easy to mess around with in case something gets borked or we have to swap something out and just uh, make it really easy on Kyler to uh, fix problems that happen to arise. And also we tend to shy away from hard lines because it's harder to ship and a lot of the PC builds that we do just end up going out to viewers. And so it's just, it's easier to uh, not do that and just to have a AIO, to have a, an air cool 
cooler. Those are easy to package to make sure that they're safe in shipping. The one that we gave away recently for the, the Corsair one, actually, and with the Project Mercury one, we had to fully disassemble it and then uh, give it away because I didn't trust any any shipping to, to keep it all together and not have liquid spill out. So yeah, uh, not likely to do Hardline anytime soon. Maybe, maybe a personal project for Kyler's build or something. We'll see if that in, ends up ever happening, but uh, sorry to disappoint.